Namaste, good morning. I hope you are keeping well. Uh, so, uh, here once again I am today uh, in front of you with another topic. Uh, so before I get in the topic, uh, I hope uh, you have been enjoying my videos on certain notes. Uh, I often uh, post uh, this type of notes here. Uh, you can just uh, find in my channel and name of my channel is Adventure in Life and to go to my channel and see the videos there i have lots of videos there uh, plenty of comments and uh, normally i make videos on the request of my uh, students friends i say friends to my students because uh, they love me i often behave with them like students and of course they do behave with me like uh, friends so i often address them as friends so student friends as for the request of uh, my students friends once again, I am here with another presentation, video presentation of the topic. Uh, before that, uh, go, to the, go to my channel and see, uh, comment there, like, subscribe, and of course, uh, just see how can I improve myself. For, for further improvement, you can just comment there and say, I can come up with a further improvement because you are my encouragement. I have been always, strengths have been always a big source of encouragement to me, so I wish I hope to see you uh, with some brilliant comments here. Encourage me uh, with the comments. Okay, so now let's uh, get into the topic. Like in the previous class, in the previous class, if you see, you will find there. Uh, I dealt, uh, I dealt with, I posted the video of uh, lamentation of the old pensioner, uh, full fed on fire, thy father lies uh, about love, of course. And likewise, today I am here with. Uh, another topic that is uh, God's grandeur. God's grandeur. It's a poem. Uh, so before I get into the poem, before I get into the poem, a little bit you should know about the background of the writer also. So here you can see the title itself, God's grandeur. So you should know with the title, you know grandeur. So grandeur uh, is pronounced like this grandeur. Sometimes you can say grandeur also. Yeah, I have heard saying a grandeur, but it's a grandeur. So, grandeur means here greatness. Greatness. Greatness means mahanta. Yes, mahanta. Or you can say uh, mahima. In the Pali, you can say mahima. Uh, great, you, know, you know the meaning of greatness. Yes, something very high. When you think of something very high. So, you can say when you think of God, if you, if you believe in God, I should say. When you believe in God, you get something high, a greatness at the top, who can, who can do everything. So that type that is um, grandeur, you know, greatness. So this is here, uh, God's greatness. Today just, I am going to talk about a little bit of summary, not in detail, just basic idea about summary. And first part, I'll deal with summary. And second part, say I'll uh, talk about theme. The uh, central idea, uh, main idea, main idea of the poem, and the letter part. Letter part, I'll deal with questions. One or two questions I have here. Please don't go away. Uh, continue watching my video and see. Uh, subscribe, please, to subscribe and share with your friends. Okay, so let's, without any delay now, let's get into it. Okay, here I go. So now, uh, Gross Granger, so you can see as Gross Granger, I just said, so he, he did a sonnet, okay? So it is a sonnet. I hope you have heard this in the classroom, which I must have told you. Sonnet, yes, this is a poem, it is a sonnet. Uh, this is not very much important for you as part of knowing, but it's good to know, okay? The sonnet means a 14 line poem, okay? It is a 14 line poem. Sonnet means 14 line poem. If you have a book in front of you, you can just see there, otherwise you can get the book and uh, follow me. You can get the book, you can pause the video and uh, get the book and follow me. You can see there is a 14 line poem, sonnet. So you will find there in the poem there are two stanzas. that means two parts, okay? Like in essay or stories with a paragraph, uh, in poem with a stanzas. So you can see there there are two stanzas. One has eight lines. First stanza has eight lines. For this we say octave. O-C-T-A-V-E. Octave. First eight lines. And second um, second stanza has six lines. So we say sestet. So you can say eight plus six, fourteen lines. So it is a 
14 line poem sonnet. Okay, this is basically you can say the type of poem. Okay, there are different types of poems. So one type of poem is this. Okay, now let's get into it. So now here uh, in this poem, Gorse Granger. Gorse Granger, what we see is uh, G. M. Hopkins. G. M. Hopkins, he is a priest. Priest, you know, like in temple we say Pandit in Hindu temple we say Pandit. So in church we say priest. Okay? Similar to Pandit. So priest, being a priest. Being a priest, you can say religious poet, let us say in that way. So G.M. Hopkins is a poet with religious mind. Or you can say a religious poet who believes in God. He is a believe, he is a believer. Okay, he believes that God is everywhere. So we might not believe, okay. You may have one way of thinking, I may have one of thinking, he or he may have other way of thinking, she may have other way of thinking. So uh, poet here. He is a strong believer in God. That means he strongly believes that there is God. So in that sense, you can say it is a religious point. Okay? Religious point. Don't go away. So here, uh, here we can see that he is a priest. Okay? Yeah, that means a point. Point is a priest. And he tells us, he tells us about the greatness of God. Great, I said greatness, grandeur, mahima. Okay, what is it? In Nepali, you say Prabhu ko Mahima. Yes, Prabhu ko Mahima, a Prabhu. What we see in that way, okay? So, um, here he talks about the greatness of God. Okay? Greatness of God. He says, God is great. How God is great? He says that greatness of God. Greatness of God can be seen in two ways. According to the poem, the speaker in the poem says, poem, in the poem says, Greatness of God can be seen in two ways. Two ways. One. One is, he says, uh, like a soup foil. Soup foil, if you look at the poem there, you will find there. S-H-O-O-K-F-O-I-L. Soup foil. Here, soup foil means, meaning is, a uh, foil means a uh, metal. Metal means uh, like road, R-O-D, road. Or sword, tarwa. Tarwa. Soup means her life, yes. So that means here, uh, let me just clarify, let me simplify. So greatness of God is first of all like a soup for it means a shining metal. Pune chomke ko bastu lai, aamle se de Allah ni ke uncha. Yes, pune chomke ko bastu like say metal road or tarwa, aamle se de Allah ni ke uncha chomke ko. So exactly he wants to say that the greatness of God is the shining, shining of sword. Okay, shining of sword when second. This is what he says. The greatness of God is greatness of God is that is first. Then second. Secondly, he says that the greatness of God is like oil. Oil. Oil means when crushed. So tori you must have seen the answer of the pocket and the answer of the other way. So, suppose you tell you exactly like that what happens when we crush, when we crush, when we crush a mustard seed, the oil comes out. Oil comes out, and we all know that oil spreads very slowly. So, exactly so you can say, he says that the greatness of God is like the oozing, the releasing of. The oil when we cross the seed. So let me remind you that he says that here the greatness of God can be known, can be seen in two ways. One, why the shining metal when second. So according to the book, you will find there soup foil. And another is oozing of oil, that means releasing of oil when crushed. The greatness. So greatness of God can be seen in two ways. Okay. But here he complains. He complains. What he complains? He complains that human beings have become very selfish. Human beings have become selfish. Why? Because they do not follow the command of the God. That means human beings, modern human beings have become so selfish. They do not like the rule of the God. Why they do not like the rule of the God? Because they are busy in destroying nature. They are busy in destroying the greatness of God. 
what he means to say so here you can say that greatness of god means here so the creation of nature making of the nature the nature that we see in front of us that is so greatness of god they are busy in destroying the greatness of god that's why you know he says that the speaker the poet says that modern human beings are so have become so selfish they do not follow the rule of the god because they are destroying nature and as a result he says due to the destruction of the nature by human beings as a result we don't see the greatness of god we don't get the smell of the god what we get we get as a result the earth has been since has the smell of human beings that means earth is full of smell of human beings that means they are dirty activities they are commercial activities only they are completely money minded they are not thinking about the creation of the god they are busy in destroying nature they are busy in earning money they are only after the money fulfilling their needs they don't want the greatness of god to be uh, there in nature that's why what he has a complaint but he says no worry no worry why because the greatness of god is never destroyed the greatness of god is never destroyed why because he says that the world is not completely destroyed though human beings are busy in destroying the greatness of god destroying nature he says that nature is never destroyed nature is never destroyed because deep down the nature there is everlasting freshness that means deep down the nature there is always freshness of god why because and that freshness that freshness that freshness appears that freshness appears the next day that means here he compares with the setting of the sun and the rising of the sun he says that destruction of nature okay destruction of nature is like the setting sun like the sun sets and we all know that when sun sets today it appears tomorrow it comes to us like that so freshness of god is freshness of nature is like with human beings are destroying the nature means it's like setting sun but next day as the sun comes freshness also remains there so in that sense we can say that the freshness of nature freshness of god greatness of god is never destroyed it always remains there what he wants to say just he says in this way so you can say in short in very short you can say that this is the uh, basic idea uh, summary you can say main idea of the poem okay, let me let's let me move on to the next next idea next idea next point that is the theme theme means main idea okay always you have to keep in mind theme means main idea sometimes we say central idea so the central idea of the poem god's grandeur which is often asked asked in the board examination also i hope you are still watching the video this please remember to comment below like and subscribe okay please do comment it is don't go away still i have to go with another topic i have some questions also so uh, central idea now we have central idea of the poem now see central idea means main idea main idea means not just summary the summary is a bit different so main idea of the poem is like as we know that uh, he is a religious poet okay that means he is a poet who believes in god who believes in religion for him as i said when we were talking about summary god is everywhere okay as i said he as he says god is every for him god is everywhere so he has that belief so exactly being a religious poet he says god is everywhere but according to him modern men do not do not like this idea modern men do not like the idea of god do not like the idea of god why because they are so much busy they are so much busy in their work busy in their work they are running after money 
and they are so much busy in destroying the nature that means destroying the greatness of god destroying the glory of god even we can say majesty destroying the majesty of god they don't that they don't have time to think about god they are running after money okay they are busy in destroying nature because they cannot realize men beings modern human beings cannot realize the beauty of the god beauty of the nature so they are busy in destroying nature so but he says but according to him as poet says the speaker says nature is never finished nature is never exhausted never expand because deep down there is always freshness so they say good deeds on earth are the result of the existence of god this is what is the central idea of the central idea of the poem general the poem is let me remind you uh, the good good deeds the good deeds on earth are the results of the existence of god so you can see here a uh, summary a uh, central idea now let's deal with few questions okay let's go few questions now as you can see one question is here why are men unaware about the greatness of god what do you think so according to you, you can comment below okay let me know why are men aware about the greatness of god so as you can see you can combine these two summary and central idea you can combine these and you can say unaware means they don't know why they, they are not aware why they don't know why human beings do not know is very simple why because they are busy in their work they are busy in their work they don't have time to think about god yes they are running after money destroying nature that's why they don't they are not very much aware you can see in one sense they are not religious minded also so i can say to all some people maybe they are not religious minded they don't believe in god maybe in their sense so you can we can have our own opinion but according to the poem why are men unaware about the god because they are busy they are busy in running after money they are busy in their work they do not have time to think about the greatness of god so this in this way you can say okay uh, that's all for today i hope you have enjoyed my today's class and please do comment and tell me uh, how can improve my videos okay see you bye bye namaste